Welcome to this training video on Watchdog's 2013 updated CampusNet service. This video will show you how to do the following. How to change the categories of websites that are blocked at your school. How to add and remove sites to your blacklist. That's the list of sites that are blocked. And your whitelist. That's a list of sites that you wish to be allowed and also how to generate reports. To access Watchdog's filter, type in filter.watchdog.net.nz into your browser. In this example I'm going to type in filter2, but you'll type in just filter.watchdog.net.nz. Then you'll be requested to log in with a FN number, this is the number that you've been given to you by Watchdog. If you don't have this, please contact Watchdog's Technical Help Desk. So type that in, and the password, and then log in. Now you're at the dashboard interface for managing Watchdog's filtering. There are five options in the top menu. First thing we're going to look at today is how we change the categories. So we click on Category Settings, Categories. Then you'll see a list of the sites, of the types of sites that are currently blocked for your school. Watchdog's CampusNet system uses categories of websites to control websites that are blocked and allowed. All websites are categorized by the system automatically. If you want to know more about these, you can put your mouse over the category and that will give you a summary of it. Or you can go into URL tools. Sorry, you can go to Category Management, Category Definitions. There you can see more detailed information on the different categories that are used in our system. The other thing you can do is you can look up to see what category a website belongs to. We click on URL Tools, URL Lookup, and we type in www.playboy.com, for example, and we click the Find button. Then you can see a list of of the fact that that site is in the category of pornography and that is what it will be categorized as. Okay, so going back to our categories list, you can see all the sites, all the uh, categories that are ticked that are currently blocked. So let's say, for example, we want to add social networking. We can click on social networking. We'll scroll down and click the submit button. And now we have social networking as an additional category to be blocked. If we wish to allow that again, we just untick the box and click the submit button. And that category is now allowed. Now you may wish to block sites that are outside of those categories. And in that case, we need to go to the deny list. So you go to category settings, deny list. And in here, you can type in both URLs and keywords. A URL is a specific address to a website, for example, www.badstuff.com. A keyword could be the word bad stuff. It's just a warning here to be careful. We recommend just that website addresses get keyed in here, not keywords, because this will block any URL with any keyword that's typed in, and it may cause overblocking. At least for example, we want to block badstuff.com, we type in www.badstuff.com and we can add that to the list. And you can see it's now added to the deny list. Click on delete, we want to remove it, and that has now been removed. If, for example, we wanted to, to block all variations of badstuff.com, Then we can just add that in. And that will that will now block both www.badstuff.com and server2.badstuff.com and also a website called badstuff.com as well. So it gives you more flexibility there. The next option we need to look at is if you would like to allow a site. Say for example you wanted to block all social networking sites, but you wanted to allow a specific one. We click on the allow list. And you can see we've uh, already got one site allowed there. 
I'm going to allow another site. Let's uh, let's type in www.goodstuff.com. That site has now been added to our allow list, so that will be accessible by the school, even if blocked in another category. If we want to remove that from the list, we just click on delete, and then that site is now accessible again. Sorry, that site is now blocked again, of course, because we, we've uh, taken it off an allow list. The next step we're going to look at today is how to do reports. So of any internet activity or blocking that's happening at your school. For this, we select reports and reporter. You will see now that there are three different groups, daily reports, weekly reports, and monthly reports. And there's five different report options in each of those categories. Internet request activity, which is the uh, all the requests for internet activity on your connection. Category activity, the allowed categories. Category activity for denied categories, top 10 websites allowed, and the top 10 websites denied. Now, all of these reports are emailed to an email address, and you can enter the email address in to this box here. If you wanted to add an additional email address in, then you can just type that in with a um, comma, and now both of those email addresses will be sent these reports. Clicking the test button will send a test message to ensure, to allow you to test to make sure that our server can actually send successfully to your email address. The reports can be sent in three different options. Email reports, this is where the report is embedded in the email itself. Email links, where a link in the email um, links you into our server to display it, and you'll need to log in to actually do that. And email reports as an attachment. And you have a choice of six different attachments, PDF, HTML, CSV, plain text, Microsoft XLS, or zipped CSV. So you can choose whichever one you want. Once you've done that, click on the Save button, and those will be set up. If you want to look at a report, you can click on the report itself. So for example, we click on this one for internet request activity. And here we see a display of the internet requests. What we can also do is we can also look at reports that have already been sent. Clicking on the More button will display the ones that have already been sent. So we can now view the report that was sent on the 16th of December, well, sorry, that covers from the 16th to the 22nd of December by clicking on that view button. The other things we can do here, let's look at the category activity as an example of, so this shows you the categories that were allowed. And if we scroll down on that report, you can see the individual categories and the total pages accessed for each of those categories. The denied report is similar. We have a list of only two categories that were blocked during this period. Top 10 websites, they're listed there with the total pages. and the top 10 websites denied. In this case, there's only a few. Now, one more setting you'll need to look at for your reporting, and that's the default paper size. So if you go into your account, click on Set Default Paper Size, then you can change that. Set it to A4 is the most common. Click on Submit, and that has now been done. I hope this has been useful for you, and we thank you for using Watchdog. If you have any questions, 
please call Watchdog's Technical Help Desk or email us at techhelp at watchdog.net.nz.